I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I'm speaking with Meredith Markworth Pollock, who was the costume designer for Impeachment American Crime Story, which aired on FX and FX on Hulu. Uh, the first question I want to ask is, what were your, is a, is a very general one, what were your thoughts on the looks of the late 1990s, considering this series takes place during that time? Yeah, um, you know, it's funny, while we started shooting, there was such this revival of 90s fashion. I think, you know, it started uh, on the runways and then slowly trickled down. And um, you really see it these days with, I think, the youth. Um, they're really embracing crop tops and sets. And even you see these oversized suiting right now with so many people. So it was kind of interesting how um, we were diving deep into fashion of the 90s and then we were seeing it literally at contemporary times on the streets. And, um, you know, I, I personally love the 90s. I'm a, I'm a 90s uh, child in, in a lot of ways. I was in high school at the time and really kind of finding my own personal style. Um, but the 90s, it's, I think saying the 90s, it's, it's quite a vast, uh, you know, term. And there were so many looks and trends happening. And specifically DC in the 90s, um, you know, I think a lot of people would say it wasn't our wasn't our finest moment in fashion, um, but I I enjoy it from a character standpoint. You saw a lot of uh, suiting for women, which was something becoming really popular. A lot of shoulder pads, um, three piece suits, a lot of monotone colors, um, and and for men, same thing. It was just kind of a slightly. I don't want to say it was too oversized. It was just um, kind of a bro much broader look than we see now. It was all about the big shoulders, um, a lot of double breasted suiting and, um, you know, a little bit of flair here and there, but definitely not what we see in DC these days. I think that women at the time really had to take themselves seriously and put on a, a front of professionalism, um, which didn't allow a lot of room for personal uh, flair or design choices that you that we see now, you know, now DC can be considered by some as like a fashion hub in some in its own right. Um, and we weren't really seeing that it was much more conservative. And it was much more toned down at the time. Um, just uh, piggybacking off of that, were there any looks from the period that you found yourself reevaluating in uh, looking at these fashions again? Um, yeah, well, you know, it was interesting. There were, uh, you know, you you also bring in uh, Monica Lewinsky and her personal style, which I think was quite different and juxtaposed this this whole trend that was happening in DC. And her being from Beverly Hills, she had she was quite trendy. She was youthful. She was young, and um, I don't know. I really I I really enjoyed her her style. I think that uh, she was classic, but also had a little bit of, um, you know, had a little bit of playfulness with her clothes. And so that was something I really wanted to embrace. And I mean, all in all, I, I kind of had the same standpoint um, after the show as I did before the show, being that I, I have a special place in my heart for the 90s. I, I understand uh, why some people roll their eyes at it. And I think that what you're seeing now and people taking uh, those trends is they're making a much more fitted and less, you know, over the top uh, as far as the fits of, of all the suiting goes. So um, yeah, I had, I had a good time with it. So turning to uh, uh, turning to the uh, actual series now, um, how much of the design aspect came from uh, just finding pictures of uh, the people of these characters and what they were wearing at the time? Because so much of this played out in the public eye. Absolutely. I mean, as soon as the story broke, uh, every day that Linda Tripp or Paula Jones or Monica Lewinsky or really Bill Clinton as well, and even Hillary stepped out into the limelight, like it was documented. Um, so it was, it was a really interesting take. I hadn't worked on a project yet where every, all the research was done for us. You know, it's all there. We just had to find those images and recreate it. Um, to me, the most interesting and kind of challenging part came from the scenes that weren't documented. So obviously, you know, this had, had been happening for a while and going on, um, 
way before it became uh, common knowledge. So it was more about, okay, well, what is Linda Tripp wearing um, as pajamas? You know, what what is uh, Monica Lewinsky wearing when she's trapped in her apartment and can't leave for weeks because there's, you know, thousands of paparazzi downstairs? Those to me, um, started becoming the real interesting questions because we didn't have documentation of that. And I, I loved the later parts where we could just uh, look at an image and, and the real question became, okay, how are we gonna recreate this? Because we wanted to keep it as authentic as possible. That was our, our biggest goal for the show was to find real pieces, uh, create the exact colors, the exact buttons, the exact fit. So obviously you have to tweak things slightly depending on your actors. Um, they may be, you know, a slightly different body shape or height as the real people. But um, for the most part, you know, we kept it uh, exact replicas of what we saw out there in the photographs. So uh, was there a character which proved to be more challenging to design a look for than uh, some of the, than most of the other characters in this series? Well, yes, I'd have to say Linda Tripp um, played by Sarah Paulson. That was, that was a hard character to design for. Um, first of all, Linda Tripp uh, was a very unique woman in the sense that she was a very large woman and I don't mean necessarily by weight but I mean just by by stature she was um gosh I think oh that's there, there's it's questionable how tall she was sometimes you could you google it and it says she was almost six feet um sometimes I think it was like five ten um so somewhere around around there which is very tall for a for a woman and she was had these very broad shoulders i mean there's there's references in the show that she was made fun of when she was younger the kids would call her um i can't remember the exact name but uh, a male football player um because she she had that build and so i think that was the hardest part of the project was taking uh sarah and building her up to make her look like uh linda tripp so you know i know um Sarah has discussed how she wore a fat suit, um, which I personally don't love that term. It was more about, um, cause it, it wasn't necessarily about adding all this weight to her. It was about changing her overall structure and body type. And it was shoulders and arms. And yes, we added a little bit of padding around the stomach, but it was also legs. And it, it, it um, was really about uh, changing the shape of her body, which obviously to a certain point, an actor can't do on their own. You know, Sarah gained um, quite a bit of weight to play this character as well. So it was really about um, changing her whole, her whole demeanor and through the physical part of her body, because if you're, if you're that tall and your shoulders are like this, like you have a presence, uh, whether you want to or not. Right. So um, designing for that plus Sarah had on um, prosthetics. And so it was, it was a challenge. We had to make sure the necklines covered her neck prosthetics. We had to make sure you couldn't see any of the padding underneath. We had to make sure all of her wrists were covered because um, Sarah's wrists are quite delicate and thin and compared to Linda. So you may notice she had on a lot of bracelets. And so it was all these little tricks that we did to help create this character. So I'd say um, that was the most, for sure, the most challenging. Also, Linda had a very uh, kind of odd and unique style, which is referenced kind of throughout, and then has this huge transformation after uh, all of a sudden she's in the public eye and she starts uh, kind of stepping back and realizing how they're mocking her. And she tries to dramatically change her look. Um, it's, it's a bit heartbreaking, actually. Um, and so we, we, knowing that we were going to have this, this big transformation at the end of the series, we also had to keep that in mind to make sure there was, there was room to grow. Um, so yeah, definitely she was, she was the hardest one. Uh, and uh, I guess I'm, I'm going to take a, a guess here that one of the more fun scenes to design costumes for is the scene where Judith Light, uh, as I can't remember the uh, lawyers, the lawyer that she portrays her name, but she takes Paula Jones to 
uh, the Nordstrom and Tyson's for a uh, complete makeover of her outfits and everything. What, would, uh, what, what was it like to design those, these, these, these outfits for Paula's new look? I mean, that was so fun. Paula and um, Susan, who is who uh, Judith Light played Susan uh, Carpenter McMillan. Um, they were so fun to design for as characters, also as actors and just general like delightful human beings. They We had a lot of fun with them as well. Um, but Paula, speaking of transformations, Paula Jones had a huge transformation and um, it was so fun to, to portray that because Susan was a very wealthy philanthropist from Pasadena and she had just kind of like classic style and Paula Jones, you know, growing up in Arkansas, like didn't, didn't, I wouldn't say had the best style, <laughs> uh, but she did, she, she did her best. And so for this transformation scene, um, it was, it was just really fun to explore the trends at the time. Again, it was all documented. We saw Paula wearing these new outfits that Susan bought her in, in paparazzi photographs. So we were able to just replicate them. Um, but it was, uh, I, I really enjoyed it because Paula um, and, and Anna Lee just was so open to trying new things and so game to kind of go big for everything. So um, yeah, we had a great time with that. So for a character like Bill Clinton, I think a lot of people would, you know, think of designing a costume for him as just, oh, it's just a suit and tie. But I was wondering if you could go into the details of what other aspects go into getting the right look for someone like, for, for a male character like Bill Clinton. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that you bring that up because yeah, I think people are like, oh, it's it's just a suit. Well, no, it's it's a very specific suit. We actually went through many different uh, samples of suiting for him to get it right. Um, and we were really studying uh, the suits that Bill, Bill Clinton mostly wore Armani suits at that time. And they were, as I'm sure a lot of you remember, um, quite broad in the shoulders, definitely some padding and um, slightly boxy in the fit. And we, you know, we tried quite a bit on Clive, making sure that he really felt comfortable in it and felt like it was period, uh, you know, authentic and, and period appropriate. So we had all his suits custom made. We played around with levels of boxiness and levels of shoulder pads. And it's so interesting because sometimes it's those really fine, minute details that actually can make or break the whole thing. And um, it was very important for us for him to kind of have that relaxed feel in them that Bill had like he was a Bill I was very casual even though yes he's in suiting he's wearing the tie but the way he wore them was very casual at times and kind of had that like um you know really kind of approachable feeling to him so we wanted to make sure that his suits reflect to that and it didn't feel too stiff or too done up um so and 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 we really didn't get to see much in the show of Bill's casual casual side there was a couple moments where we saw him you know stepping onto air force one or going to martha's vineyard where we had some of his casual looks um but for the most part it was it was a lot of suiting for him so um uh, i you know it's being a costume designer you get to work in you know such amazing areas of uh of what of of art and contribute to that. And I was wondering, is there a certain type of costume design that you haven't gotten to do, be it, you know, like 16th century England or, you know, 10,000 years of the future on some distant planet, you know, that you would just leap at the chance to tackle? Um, I love that question. <laughs> I feel very fortunate. I've gotten to do a lot of different periods and, and moments. Um, I personally love the 70s uh, fashion. So I, specifically in, in New York. So I would love the opportunity to do, you know, 70, late 70s uh, in New York. Uh, that would be a big uh, goal of mine. Also, I've yet to do anything really set in the future. I always think that's like, it, that uses a whole nother side of the brain. And I see these people 
um, you know, doing these kind of sci-fi fantasy shows set in the future with like, they're making up their own fabrics. Like it's just wild. And I'm, I'm so in awe of, of designers who do that. And um, that would be a really fun opportunity as well. Well, um, Meredith, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we wish you all the best during this award season. And to all of our viewers, please like, share, subscribe, smash that subscribe button. And don't forget to go to goldderby.com and use the Gold Derby app to make your Emmy predictions before the nominations come out. Thanks so much, Meredith. Thank you.